Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are looking at timers. And in this video, we are actually going to do an example program which will set up timer B0 on the MSP430 FR2355. And we are going to set it up to generate an interrupt every time we get an overflow on the counter. And we're going to clock the counter with a clock. And every time it overflows, we will toggle. LED one. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We always think about, you know, the calculation of what we're going to do and how long time is going to, you know, elapse between these events. And so what I do is I always have a, a, a model of what the counter looks like or the timer looks like. So here is my kind of generic model of what's happening. And we are going to choose a clock as the source of the timer, and we're not going to divide it. So that means that the timer is going to be clocked off of 32.768 kilohertz. That means the period of the clock is 1 over 32K. And if we want to figure out how long it takes to overflow, meaning that the counter is going to go from 0000 up to FFFF, we're going to keep this in 16-bit timer mode. And it's going to go all the way to FFFF, and it's going to roll over to zero and keep counting. To figure out how long that overflow takes, we use this equation. We say it's the amount of time in the period of each clock times the number of counts that have occurred. When you do overflow, the number of counts in between events is always 2 to the n. So we plug in 2 to the 16th. That gives us the number of counts to go from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to FFFF, multiplied by the period of the clock, which is 1 over 32K. And what is going to happen is that generates an overflow period of 2 seconds. So if I configure this timer like this, source is A clock, no division, no division, and I leave this in 16-bit mode, I have to put it in continuous mode in order to get it to continually overflow. This will overflow every two seconds. Then if I come down here and I enable the local interrupt and the global interrupt for the timer system, I can actually have this flag be asserted every time there's an overflow, trigger an interrupt service routine, and then I can toggle the LED. So this will be the LED will be on for two seconds, off for two seconds, on for two seconds, off for two seconds. Okay, so let us begin. Go ahead and fire up Code Composer. And off we go. So let's make a uh, let's see, file new CCS project. And we're finally able to get to a new part called timers. So we have ASM timers. And then I'm going to do a clock overflow. Okay. Now, we are, this is going to take a lot of setup. Okay. And so we kind of have to have, you know, you're probably going to have the book or the data sheet open. Um, so that you can see the registers that you need to actually be messing with. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to scroll this over here. And I want to have this picture. I want to have this picture on the screen at all times. So I have this. I just got to remember what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. So here's Code Composer. And we'll, we'll resize it kind of as we go. <clears throat> but kind of there's the model there right there. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to come down here into my main loop, and I'm going to have my first little set of initialization code. So let's put a knit as a label, and let's do this. I'm going to go set up LED. So we're going to configure our peripherals here. We're going to set up a port. Let's see, the LED is on port 1, bit 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say bit set dot B. I'm going to do a pound bit 0 ampersand port 1 DIR. And that's going to be set port 1 bit 0 to output. And then let's go ahead and make its initial value off. So I'm going to go bit clear, and then I'm going to go pound bit bit 0, and then I'm going to go ampersand P1 out. Turn LED1 off. Okay, so my, my uh, configuration registers for LED1 are, one are ready to go. I also need to bit clear the uh, lock low power mode, LPM5 in the ampersand PM5CTL0 register. And that's going to be enable digital 
I O. Okay, so I got I got those three right there, and that turns on basically the I O system. So now I'm ready to to think about the timer system, and that's why we're here. Okay, so let's try, let's try to stop jumping around. And here we go. All right, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to go do a comment block. I'm going to go setup timer B zero. This is very important right here because we don't, we know we only have timer B, but we got to decide which timer we're going to use. So let's start with B zero. Okay. All right. So I'm going to come down here. First thing I'm going to do is remember the recommended setup for this is that we are going to uh, we are going to first write to this bit right here. We're going to clear TB clear by writing a one to this bit. And then we configure all the settings for it. Okay, so the first thing we always do with this timer, and this was recommended in the data sheet, is I'm gonna now do word 16-bit operations because these are 16-bit registers, and I'm gonna go pound TB clear in ampersand TB0 CTL. Okay, this is gonna be clear TB0. Now you gotta stop for a second and go, okay. I was with you when you did the port one DIR because we looked that up over in the linker podcast. You gotta be saying, where did you find this TBCLR? So it turns out if you go out under the includes files and you scroll down to MSP 430 FR2355.h, if you look in this file, there are a whole bunch of definitions that are defined for you in here for the masks of every bit in every configuration register. So this is where you need to be looking to figure out the exact spellings of these. So if I look in here, pound, you know, define TBCLR has a mask of 0004. That means it is gonna mess with bit position three. You know, that's essentially 0001000000. And so that is the position of the TB clear bit in the configuration register TB0 control, okay? So we wanna be using these descriptive masks so that our code is readable and that and so we don't screw up because it's gonna be very difficult to keep track of all this stuff. Okay, so I just wrote to this bit, TB clear in the TB0 control register and that cleared the register, that cleared the timer. Now what I am gonna do is I'm gonna choose a clock as my source. This is the TB SSEL bits. There's two of them in the TB0 control register. And so now I'm ready to go in here and I want to set these bits to 0, 01. Let's go over into the, the include file and see if they might have given us some bits for this thing too. So let me do TB SSEL. Lo and behold, <clears throat> look at this. You have def definitions for TB SSEL and you have zero, you have one, you have all this cool stuff in there. But look at this. They actually have labels in here for a clock. And so this is a mass that if we do a bit set on that, it's going to configure these two bits as zero one. Note that the most significant bit is going to be zero by default. So if we just do a bit set using this mask right here, it's actually very readable and it will accomplish what we want to accomplish. So watch how I do this. I'm going to go bit set dot W and I'm going to go pound T B S S E L underscore underscore a clock in and percent T B zero C T L. I just choose. I just said my clock a clock is what I just chose. Chose a clock. Choose a clock. OK, now that is very readable. Now that did involve me actually going over and looking up that mask, but that's fine. That's what you're gonna be doing every time you do this. Okay, now I have my clock source. And, and again, what that did is it went into these two bits and it asserted the least significant bit. And that's why I only needed one set instruction. If I tried to go to the one one setting, I'd have to do two different bit sets, but that's all right. Well, actually you'd have to go look and see what, what mask it gave you. Maybe it'd give you one to do that. Let's now, do we want to divide anything? The answer is no. Do we want to divide anything in the second stage divider? No. We want 32.768 kilohertz, which is a clock, to drive the counter. What I do want to do now is I want to put this into continuous mode. So let's go take a look at what we do there. So I'm going to go B0 
bit set dot w and I'm wondering, do you think that there is a mask in here for continuous? Continue. Where are you? And lo and behold, look at what it's got. MC for mode control underscore continuous. So there's a mask in here that allows me to just simply say this. MC underscore underscore continue us and then ampersand TB0 CTL. So what I did here is put put into continue us mode. Now that was really important because I need continuous mode so that I can trigger flags or trigger interrupts on a rollover or a timer overflow. And that's the mode it needs to be in. And we want it to run forever. So that's what I did right here in order to get that into continuous mode. Now, counter length by default is 16 bits. So at this time, I have cleared this all out and got it ready to go. I chose a clock and then I chose continuous mode. This thing is ready to go. And in fact, it's probably running right now once I download it. So now let's set up our interrupts. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the IRQs. So I wanna do T, B, I, F, D, I don't know, overflow IRQ, okay? So now what do I need to do? First thing I'm gonna do is let's do the local enable. So I'm gonna do a bit set.w and I go into that include file again and I notice that I have a mask for TBIE in the TB0CTL register. So I just did a local enable for overflow. So TB0 overflow. So that was my local enable. And now what I can do is I can do a EINT, which is enable global for maskables. So that means I'm gonna allow globals. And then let's clear the flag. Let's go ahead and clear that flag so that I know that it's at zero, even though I know probably it is. But I'm gonna go bit clear, or excuse me, bit clear, and I'm gonna do TBIFG, and that is again in the TB0 CTL register. So I'm gonna do clear flag, clear flag for first use. Now, look at all these, these masks that I use, and I, I looked all of them up, right? I, I mean, I showed you how to look a couple of them up. <laughs> the rest of them I already knew because I've done this before. But look at how readable this thing is. I really just needed to find out what the name of the control register was, TB0CTL. And that was actually kind of easy because it's, it matched the data sheet. But these masks were the key. I had to go into this uh, header file for the device that we're using, and I had to find those exact names, and that allowed me to write something that's really readable. Okay, so this is great. Now, here we go. Check this out. I am going to now implement my interrupt service routine, okay? So here we go. Actually, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm going to do the following. First of all, we just set up some stuffs. So let's let's create our main, uh, our main loop here. Okay, so got a little out of the hand there. Let's go ahead and come up here and let's do our main loop. So I'm gonna go main, and what do you wanna do? Nothing, okay? I am not gonna do anything. I am just gonna, let the, the timer run. When it overflows, I'm gonna use an interrupt service routine to handle toggling the LED. So here's how I'm gonna do this. We need to now write our interrupt service routine. Okay, so I'm gonna make this little comment block right here. Uh, let's get this on the screen so you can see that. So that's everything we got. And I'm gonna go interrupt service routines. And now this is just a routine that I'm gonna write and it's gonna be right in program memory after all these instructions right here. And this is first and foremost, we need a label. So I'm gonna call this ISR underscore TB0 overflow. That's pretty descriptive. And now what am I gonna do in this in this thing? Well, the whole point of this is I want to toggle the LED. So I'm gonna to do toggle bit zero on P and percent P1 out. And so what I did there is toggle LED one. And now what else do I need to do? Well, I'm actually done with the functionality, but I'm not done with what needs to be handled in this routine. Remember, I need to clear the flag. Luckily, I wrote that code right here, so I don't need to type it in again, so I can copy and paste that, clear the flag so that this interrupt can happen again, and then return from interrupt, okay? Okay, so there's my interrupt service routine. What's left? Well, there's one last piece of things that we have to do. 
we have to initialize the vector table. So I go down to the interrupt vector and I say, which vector is this? Well, if you remember from a, a video a while ago, well, the last video, it's this is the one we're going to use, TB0 IFG. So that is the flag that is asserted. That's the interrupt. Oh, no, that's the flag that's asserted. Uh, so if I enable that, it is going to trigger an interrupt within this vector. And it's FFF6, but I don't need to remember that. What I want to do is use int 42. So that's what I want to actually put down here. So I'm going to do dot sect. Out of there. I'm going to do it right here. Dot sect. And I'm going to go pound dot int 42. And then I'm going to go dot short. And what I'm putting in here is this address. I want to insert that address. Boom, boom, in here. And I'm going to do init vector table for TB0 overflow. And voila, I did it. <laughs> okay, so now let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start a session and we're going to let this thing rip. Okay, so now I got my board plugged in and, you know, this is, this is slow. So this is 1001, 1001, 1002. So it's actually running really slow. So let's see if First of all, if it works, and then I'll just start a stopwatch on my phone and kind of give us a rough time. So since this is so slow, we don't need to put an oscilloscope on it or anything. So it's firing up, doing its thing, downloading, warming up here, I guess. All right, so I got it on here, and I hit go, and let's see if anything happens. Oh, look at that. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so look at this. Now, here it goes. Oh, uh, let me stop and reset and check. So ready? When it comes out, I'll do it. Back! 1,000, 1,002, 1,001, 1,002, 1,001, 1,002. So it's a little, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's two seconds. It's two seconds. Two seconds on, two seconds off. Two seconds on, two seconds off. But look how awesome this is. Look at what we did. I mean, look at this. This is just so cool because we did it all with a timer interrupt. And if you really go back to our code, what all, look, look at what we did. We turned on the LED and turned and drove it to a zero. So, okay, that we know how to do that. But in six instructions, we were able to clear the timer B0 to get it ready to be configured. We chose A clock as a source. We put its mode in continuous and it starts running. Then all we did was enable the interrupt for an overflow. We did global enable for all masculine interrupts. We cleared the flag and then we got in an infinite loop. And then when you come down here, we let this interrupt service routine handle the functionality of toggling LED1. The only thing we needed to remember was that, hey, you got to make sure to clear that flag and return from interrupt. And then we just pop that starting address of the service routine into the vector table. And boom, you are using a timer to toggle LED1 at about two seconds. <laughs> awesome job. All right. So as always, remember to support my channel by subscribing so I can continue to bring you these videos. See ya.